Welcome to iRobot. I am Kishore Kumar Vajra. Today we are going to learn how to improve our deep neural network using Keras. In the previous tutorial, we have built a simple deep neural network which was trained on CIFAR 10 dataset. It has given accuracy of 52.5% on the training set and 49.2% on testing set. The reason may be there is not anything in the network that takes into account that the spatial structure of the input images. In this tutorial, we will improve this neural network by introducing convolutional layers, batch normalization layers, flatten layer, dropout layer and dense layer. This is a supervised learning method and this is the improved neural network we are going to build. We will see each layer briefly. First one input layer. The input to this layer are images. This layer will hold the pixel intensity values of the image. For example, if an input image with width 32, height 32 and depth 3, that is 32 by 32 by 3 for colored images and 32 by 32 by 1 for gray images. For a colored image, generally we have the red, green and blue channels, while for grayscale images we have only one channel. Generally, the images are fed in batches as four dimensional tensors where the first dimension is the image index, second and third dimensions are the height and width of the image and fourth dimension is the channel. In stochastic gradient descent, a few samples are selected randomly instead of the whole data set for each iteration. Convolutional layer will take images from the preceding layers and convolve with them the filters. As we know that the image is representing with pixel values. These are scaled in neural networks for best working. When the convolution process initiated, the filter values are multiplied with the image pixel values and summing the result. When the filter moved across the entire image from left to right and top to bottom, the resulting values are recorded and produce new images called output feature maps. The total number of output feature maps is equal to the total number of filters. In this process, we will obtain a new array that picks out a particular feature of input depending on the values in the filter. This is exactly what a convolutional layer with multiple filters is designed to do. Strides. In the convolution process, the filters are moving across the images is called strides. This parameter is the step size. It is used by the convolution layer to move the filters across the input. Increasing the stride therefore reduces the size of the output tensor. For example, if strides equal to 2, the height and width of the input tensor will be half the size. If strides equal to 1, the height and width of the input tensor will be small. These strides are useful for reducing the spatial size of the tensor as it passes through the network while increasing the number of channels. Padding. If you want the image size to be remain after the stride, then use padding parameter equal to same. It means input parameter pads the input data with zeros so that the output size from the layer is exactly the same as the input size when strides equal to 1. Padding equal to same parameter is a good way to ensure that you are able to easily keep track of the size of the tensor as it passes through many convolutional layers. In Keras, the Convo 2D layer applies convolutions to an input tensor with two spatial dimensions such as an image that is 32 by 32 size. The output of a Kanu 2D layer is another four dimensional tensor of shape, batch size, height, width and filters. So we can stack Kanu 2D layers on top of each other to grow the depth of our neural network. 
it is really important to understand how the shape of the tensor changes as data flows through from one convolutional layer to the next. This will be seen in the programming part while applying convo 2D layers to the CIFAR 10 data set. Batch normalization. There is a general problem when training a deep neural network if the weights of the network start to become too large. This is a sign that your network is suffering from what is known as the exploding gradient problem because the errors are propagated backward to the network. The calculation of the gradient in the earlier layers can sometimes grow exponentially large. It causes wild fluctuations in the weight values. It causes the network has exploded. If the weights move further away from their random initial values, this leads to start network breakdown. This phenomenon is known as covariate shift. Batch normalization is a technique for improving the speed, performance and stability of neural networks. Batch normalization is a solution that drastically reduces covariate shift problem. A batch normalization layer calculates the mean and standard deviation of each of its input channels across the batch and normalizes by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. There are two learned parameters for each channel, the scale that is gamma and shift that is beta. The output is simply the normalized input scaled by gamma and shifted by beta. Let's see the batch normalization process. Input is the mini batch of images B xi equal to x1, x2, x3, comma 2xm. From this mini batch, we will get learned parameters or gamma and beta. And its output is the normalized input. First, we will find the mean of the mini batch as the sum of the total images divided by total number of images. Next, we will find standard deviation. It is the square root of the variance that is sigma square. It means subtracting the mean from the input and squared it for every input value and finally divide it by total number of mini batch images. Now the batch normalization is normalization of input as the mean is subtracting from the input and divide it by standard deviation. The output is simply the normalized input scaled by gamma and shifted by beta. So in the batch normalization process, we will get the normalized input. We can place batch normalization layers after dense or convolutional layers to normalize the output from those layers. How many parameters are contained within a batch normalization layer? For every channel in the preceding layer, two weights need to be learned that is the scale gamma and shift beta. These are the trainable parameters. While data passing through the layer, two parameters are derived from each channel that is moving average and moving standard deviation. They are called non-trainable parameters. In total, this gives four parameters for each channel in the preceding layer where two are trainable and two are non-trainable. To calculate the moving average and moving standard deviation in Keras, the batch normalization layer implements the batch normalization functionality that is batch normalization of momentum equal to 0.9 where momentum parameter is the weight given to the previous value when calculating the moving average and moving standard deviation. Flatten layer Flattening means converting the data into a one-dimensional array for inputting it to the next layer. We flatten the output of the convolutional layers to create a single long feature vector and it is connected to the final classification model which is called a fully connected dense layer. In other words, we put all the pixel data in one line 
and make connections with the final layer. Dropout layers. If an algorithm performs well on the training data set but not on the test data set, we say that it is suffering from overfitting. To counteract this problem, we have to use regularization techniques which ensure that the model is penalized if it starts to overfit. There are many ways to regularize a machine learning algorithm but for deep learning one of the most common is by using dropout layers. Dropout layers are very simple. During training each dropout layer chooses a random set of units from the preceding layer and sets their output to zero. Dropout layers are used most commonly after dense layers because dense layers are most prone to overfitting due to the higher number of weights and you can also use dropout layers after convolutional layers. Using Keras, the dropout layer used with the rate parameter. This parameter specifies the proportion of units to drop from the preceding layer. For example, if rate equal to 0.5, it means dropout layer drops randomly some weights of preceding layer in proportion of units. Incredibly, this dropout layer drastically reduces overfitting by ensuring that the network doesn't become over dependent on certain units or groups of units. In effect, it just remember observations from the training set. By using dropout layers, the network cannot rely too much on any one unit and therefore knowledge is more evenly spread across the whole network. This makes the model much better at generalizing to unseen data because the network has been trained to produce accurate predictions even under unfamiliar conditions such as those caused by dropping random units. There are no ways to learn within a dropout layer as the units to drop are decided stochastically. At test time, the dropout layer doesn't drop any units so that the full network is used to make predictions. Note, batch normalization can also reduce overfitting. Therefore, many modern deep learning architectures don't use dropout layers at all and rely solely on batch normalization for regularization. As with most deep learning principles, there is no golden rule that applies in every situation. The only way to know for sure what's best is to test different architectures and see which performs best on a holdout set of data. Dense layer a dense layer is a regular DNN layer, deep neural network layer. Each neuron receives input from all the neurons in the previous layer, thus densely connected. For instance, if layer 1, that is flatten layer, has 5 neurons and layer 2, that is dense layer, has 3 neurons, the total number of connections between layer 1 and layer 2 would be 15 that is 5 into 3. Since it accommodates every possible connection between the layers, it is called a dense layer. The activation function, leaky relu, it updates the weights through back propagation. The relu rectified linear unit activation function is defined to be 0 if the input is negative and is otherwise equal to the input. The leaky relu activation function is very similar to relu with one key difference whereas the relu activation function returns 0 for input values less than 0. The leaky relu function returns a small negative number proportional to the input. Relu based functions are now established to be the most reliable activations to use between the layers of a deep network to encourage table training. The softmax activation is useful 
if you want the total sum of the output from the layer to equal one we have used a soft max activation in the final layer to ensure that the output is a set of 10 probabilities that sum to one which can be interpreted as the charms that the image belongs to each class and now we will see the coding part import the required keras packages on separate and data set using these lines of code there are no columns or rows in this data set instead this is a tensor with four dimensions that is image underscore index height width and channel here we are loading cipar 10 data set and from that using this line of code we have obtained training and testing images of size 50,000 and 10,000 of 32 by 32 color images respectively for better results we need to scale the input data using these lines of code using this code change the integer labeling of the images to one hot encoded vectors of length 10 y underscore train and y underscore test are numpy arrays of shape 50,000, 1 and 10,000, 1 respectively containing the integer labels in the range 0 to 9 for the class of each image building the model with layers now we will build the model this is the input layer the input layer takes data as tuple. The input layer shape is none by 32 by 32 by 3. Color image with 32 by 32 size with 3 channels. Keras uses none to represent the fact that we can pass any number of images through the network simultaneously as batches. Now we will build convolution layer 1. Here total 32 filters used of size 3 by 3 with strides equal to 1 and padding equal to same. This is convolved with input layer. The shape of filters is 3 by 3 by 3 because kernel underscore size is 3 by 3 and there are 3 channels in the preceding layer that is input layer. It is worth remembering that the depth of the filters in the layer is always the same as the number of channels in the preceding layer. In this case, three channels in the preceding layer. The output from each filter when applied to each 3 by 3 by 3 section of the input image will be the pixel wise multiplication of the filter weights on the area of the image it is covering as strides equal to 1 and padding equal to same the width and height of the output image are both same as input image and since there are 32 filters the output of the first layer is a batch of tensors each having shape 32 by 32 by 32 in general the shape of the output from a convolutional layer with padding equal to same is none comma input height by stride comma input width by stride comma filters that is equal to none comma 32 by 1 comma 32 by 1 comma 32 total 32 filters used therefore the number of parameters or weights in the layer is 3 by 3 by 3 plus 1 into 32 equal to 896 weights where the plus 1 is due to the inclusion of a bias attached to each of the filters next batch normalization layer introduced batch normalization layer improves speed performance and stability it reduces covariate shift. It is convolved with convolution layer 1, where 32 is the number of channels in the preceding layer and 4 is the number of parameters in the batch normalization layer. So total weights are 120H. Next, leaky relu activation function introduced. It is convolved with output of batch normalization layer. 
it updates the waves through back propagation relu based functions are now established to be the most reliable activations to use between the layers of a deep network to encourage stable training leaky relu activations fix the issue by always ensuring the gradient is non zero its output is none comma 32 comma 32 comma 32 without parameters now we will build convolution layer 2 with 32 filters of size 3 by 3 with strides equal to 2 on padding it is convolved with preceding layer that is leaky relu of first convolution layer in the second convolution layer we choose the filters to be 3 by 3 and they now have depth 32 to match the number of tunnels in the previous layer we used strides equal to 2 and padding equal to same so the width and height both become hollow this gives us an overall output shape of none into 16 into 16 into 32 since there are 32 filters in this layer, this gives a total number of parameters of 3 by 3 by 32 plus 1 into 32 that gives 9248 weights. After the second convolution layer, there is a batch normalization layer. It has four parameters that is gamma, beta, moving average and moving standard deviation. On the channels in the preceding layer is 32. So total parameters 32 into 4 equal to 128. After batch normalization layer, we have introduced the leaky relu activation function. Its output is none comma 16 comma 16 comma 32 without weights. Now we will build convolution layer 3 with 64 filters of size 3 by 3 with strides 1 and padding. It is convolved with preceding layer that is leaky relu layer of second convolution layer. In the third convolution layer we choose the filters to be 3 by 3 and they now have depth 32 to match the number of channels in the preceding layer. We use strides equal to 1 and padding equal to same. So the width and height both become same. This gives us an overall output shape of none into 16 into 16 into 64. Since there are 64 filters in this layer, this gives a total number of parameters of 3 into 3 into 32 plus 1 into 64 that gives 18,496 weights. After the third convolution layer, there is a batch normalization layer. It has four parameters and the channels in the preceding layer is 64. So total parameters 64 into 4 equal to 256. After batch normalization layer, there is leaky relu activation function its output is none comma 16 comma 16 comma 64 without weights. Now we will build convolution layer 4 with 64 filters of size 3 by 3 with strides 2 and padding. In the fourth convolution layer, we choose the filters to be 3 by 3 and they now have depth 64. To match the number of channels in the preceding layer, we used strides equal to 2 and padding equal to same. So the width and height both become hollow. This gives us an overall output shape of none into 8 into 8 into 64. Since there are 64 filters in this layer, this gives a total number of parameters that is weights of 3 into 3 into 64 plus 1 into 64 equal to 36,928. 
after the fourth convolution layer there is a batch normalization layer it has four parameters on 64 channels from the preceding layer so total parameters 64 into 4 equal to 256 after batch normalization layer we have used leaky relu activation its output is none comma 8 comma 8 comma 64 without weights after applying a series of convert 2d layers we need to flatten the tensor using the keras flatten layer flattening means converting the data into a one dimensional array for inputting it to the next layer we flatten the output of the convolutional layer to create a single long feature vector we put all the pixel data in one line and make connections with the final layer the reason we do this is because the subsequent dense layer requires that its input is flat this results in a set of 8 into 8 into 64 that gives 4096 units that we can connect to a dense layer of 128 units in the dense layer total weights are 4096 plus 1 into 128 that gives 5,24,416 weights. After the dense layer, there is a batch normalization layer. It has four parameters on 128 channels in the preceding layer. So total parameters are 128 into 4 that gives 5 value. After that, leaky relu activation is introduced its output is none comma 128 without weights after that we have introduced a dropout layer at the rate 0.5 its output is none comma 128 without weights now it is connected to final dense layer of 10 units with softmax activation in the dense layer total weights are 128 plus 1 into 10 that equal to 1290 weights the softmax activation is useful if you want the total sum of the output from the layer to equal 1 its output may be aeroplane automobile ship or truck generally the first convolution layer learns to detect edges while the second may learn to detect more complex shapes that can be formed by combining different edges such as circles and rectangles and so on the third layer and beyond learn much more complicated features based on the features generated in the previous layer this example demonstrates how we can chain convolutional layers together to create a convolutional neural network the final step is to define the model itself using the model class in keras a model is defined by the input and output layers in our case we have one input layer and the output layer is the final dense layer of 10 units it is also possible to define models with multiple input and output layers in our example as required the shape of our input layer matches the shape of x underscore train and shape of our dense output layer matches the shape of y underscore train to illustrate this we can use the model dot summary method to see the shape of the network at each layer the summary method also gives the number of parameters that is weights that will be trained at each layer model dot summary method output describes for the each layer and its output shape with corresponding parameters that is weights as described earlier the total parameters 5,92,554 out of this trainable parameters are 5,91,914 and non-trainable parameters are 640 notice how Keras uses none as a marker to show that it does not yet know the number of observations that will be passed into the network. In fact, it does not need to know. Now our model is ready for compiling the model. In this step, we will compile the model with an optimizer and a loss function. 
the optimizer is the algorithm that will be used to update the weights in the neural network based on the gradient of the loss function here we have used adam optimizer loss function here categorical cross entropy loss function used for classifying each observation it compares its predicted output to the actual output it returns a single number for each observation if number is greater the network has performed version for this observation we pass both the optimizer and loss function into the compile method of the model as well as a matrix parameter that is accuracy training the model up till now we have not shown to our model any data and have just set up its architecture and compile the model with a loss function and optimizer to train the model simply call the fit method as shown here model.fit or text ray this is the input raw image data white ray this is one hot encoded class labels batch size equal to 30 it determines how many observations will be passed to the network at each training step here number of epochs given 10 the epochs determine how many times the network will be shown the full training data if shuffle equal to true the batches will be drawn randomly without replacement from the training data at each training step validation data it evaluates test data this will start training a deep neural network to predict the category of an image from the cipar 10 data set the training process works as follows first the weights of the network are initialized to small random values then the network performs a series of training steps at each training step one batch of images is passed through the network and the errors are back populated to update the weights by providing the batch size value to the model the gradient calculation will be done if the batch size is large the gradient calculation will be more stable but each training step would be slower it would be time consuming and computationally intensive to use the entire data set to calculate the gradient at each training step so generally a batch size between 32 and 256 is used it is also now recommended practice to increase the batch size as training progresses this continues until all observations in the data set have been seen once this completes the first epoch in the similar way, second epoch starts. The data is then passed through the network again in batches as part of the second epoch. This process repeats until the specified number of epochs have elapsed. In this case, we have specified 10 epochs. During training, Keras outputs the progress of the procedure as shown. We can see that the training data set of 50,000 observations has been shown to the network 10 times that is over 10 epochs at a rate of approximately 400 to 600 microseconds per observation the categorical cross entropy loss has fallen from 1.54472 to 0.6403 resulting in an accuracy increasing from 45.9 percent after the first epoch to 77.6 percent after the 10th epoch and test data validation the loss minimized from 1.2734 to 0.7888 and accuracy from 55.7 percentage to 72.5 percentage now our model achieves an accuracy of 77 percent on training set but how does it perform on data it has never seen to know the test data accuracy we have to evaluate our model like this model dot evaluate of x underscore test comma y underscore test comma batch size equal to thousand as you can see this model is now achieving 72.5 percent accuracy up from 49 percent previously much better this improvement has been achieved simply by changing the architecture of the model to include convolutional batch normalization and dropout layers notice that the number of parameters is actually fewer in our new model than the previous model even though the number of layers is far greater 
This demonstrates the importance of being experimental with your model design and being comfortable with how the different layer types can be used to your advantage. When building generative models, it becomes even more important to understand the inner workings of your model since it is the middle layers of your network that capture the high level features that you are most interested in. Let's come to the end that is output of our improved model. We can use some of the predictions on test set using predict method. Here, Reds is an array of shape 10,000 comma 10 that is a vector of 10 class probabilities for each observation. We convert this array of probabilities back into a single prediction using numpy's argmax function. Here, x is equal to minus 1 tells the function to collapse the array over the last dimension, that is the classes dimension, so that the shape of Reds underscore single is then 10,000 comma 1. Now let's use some of the images alongside their labels and predictions with the following code. This figure shows a randomly chosen selection of predictions made by the model alongside the true labels. Congratulations, you have improved your first deep neural network using convolution dropout layers using Keras and use it to make predictions on new data set. This is a supervised learning method. See you all again. Signing off. Kishore Kumar Vajja from iRobot.